SpaceX Starship Update and 3D Animated Progress Update. My name is Felix and I am your host for today's episode of What About It. And as always, there has been a lot going on in the space industry lately, so let's take right off. Starship Updates I know you've been waiting a week for my next update on SpaceX's Starship Progress in Boca Chica and I am sorry. This time though we'll go the whole nine yards as SpaceX has done something I wouldn't have thought to be possible at this stage. They aren't just working on one Starship. Since my last update on last week's Monday episode, SpaceX has shown again that their dedication to make lots of progress on Starship development this year is here to stay. Starships right now are rough cuts. Most of the tech needed to finish a complete Mars mission does not exist yet and a crewed version is even further into the future. Nonetheless, SpaceX right now is doing everything possible to advance through these early stages as quick as they can. Musk wants to see these Starships fly. To see a Starship fly though, we need a check mark on that dreaded cryo test and for that we need test candidates willing to go through with it. SpaceX finished the stacking process rather quick this time and out of the high bay came serial number 4. The latest in a line of brave tank sections to conquer the test stand. Every Starship has a few additions and changes as does serial number 4. Heat tiles in different spots are on the hull to be able to test their performance under flight conditions. In these tests it's not about actual heat resistance. Starship's heat shield will be a non-ablative insulation shield, meaning it can be reused many many times if properly designed. Part of this design process is to find a good way of attaching the tiles onto Starship's hull. Especially vibrations in combination with large temperature differences can stress these tiles. To find the best possible mounting option, a few tests can already be done. SpaceX attaches these tiles in different locations and with different methods. As you can see in this picture, one of the tiles seems to be glued onto the hull and the other one seems to be mechanically attached. Musk said on Twitter though that he is not interested in glue as it wouldn't be reliable enough. As it seems though SpaceX is willing to put the two options up for a test against each other. While static fire and a 150 meter hop are conducted, these tiles will be subjected to vibrations created by the three Raptor engines. After the tests, SpaceX workers will carefully remove the tiles and inspect them to see if there are any changes. Placed onto the roll lift, the journey went down Highway 4 towards the launch site by the sea. These are the moments when the immense size of these tank sections becomes apparent. These gigantic steel monsters are impressive to say the least and they are but a fraction of a finished Starship and a super heavy stack. Things will get even larger in Boca Chica to a point where it will seem absurd. Even a Saturn V will only come in second to a SpaceX Starship and right now the old timer moon rocket is the reference for every other rocket to be measured against. Arrived at the launch site, the heavy lift crane carefully set serial number 4 down on the recently renovated test stand. It's a surreal sight every time it happens. Elon Musk took the opportunity to get a drone up in the air and take one of those epic shots you can only take from the bird's eye view. This makes it easy to get a general overview for those who might still have trouble with the layout at the launch site. The Starship test stand itself is resting on a massive concrete pad elevated on a dirt hill. Since nothing around the launch pad itself is properly built out yet, it's a pretty dirty scene and we should expect lots of dust and large smoke clouds for static fire and 150 meter hop from this location. Right next to the test stand itself in the upper left we have the fuel farm. This section of the launch site includes everything from water tanks to nitrogen, oxygen and methane tanks. All of them connected through large pipe raceways leading towards the test stand passing through a dirt wall separating fuel farm and the test stand itself. The white line to the left leaving the picture leads towards the methane flare, situated quite a bit away from the launch site for security reasons. You do not want to have open fire next to the tanks. In the lower right you can see the dirt ramp leading down towards Highway 4 and the landing pad. After the Starship prototype was secured on the stand, workers began to prepare it for its big moment. The cryogenic validation test. The test that's been the showstopper for a while now. Room temperature nitrogen gas was filled into the tanks to check for leaks. 
The pad was cleared, SpaceX workers began pressurizing the tank section and condensate started to build up on the outside of the hull, signaling pressure buildup in both methane and the oxygen main tanks. Venting was performed and pressure was slowly taken down again. After the test, workers began spraying the tank section with their leak detecting solution again. We've seen this process before. It's likely something simple like soap water and it's supposed to create bubbles in leaking spots. This is done if there's a pressure loss which is not coming from vents but can't be easily located. Then came the big night. Spot on and stage clear for serial number 4 versus cryo testing. Workers in Boca Chica opened the valves for an event that is dreaded amongst Starship enthusiasts. The infamous cryogenic pressure test. In this test, the tanks are flooded with liquid nitrogen, an inert gas that acts as the test substitute for cryogenic oxygen and methane, which is used on a real flight. These cryogenic tests are to validate the structural integrity of the tanks in a high pressure and cryogenic temperature environment and in the past, every complete tank section could not pass it. And we've had all sorts of reasons for it. Bad welds, bad design parts and even human error with a wrong test sequence on Starship Serial Number 3. This time though, the test was successful. Serial Number 4 has officially passed the test. Pressure was raised in both tanks, the typical frost build up on the outside and Elon Musk himself confirmed on Twitter that the milestone had been reached. Serial number 4 is good to go for a static fire. Let the celebrations begin. As Musk tweeted, this cryogenic test was only taken up to 4.9 bar though, which is rather low compared to the 8.6 bars, which would be full flight pressure plus safety margin. Kind of a softball, as he put it, but it's enough for a 150 meter flight. Musk confirmed as well that the static fire will hopefully occur later this week and with only one Raptor engine. He also confirmed on Twitter that the 150 meter hop will as well be performed with only one engine. And he also hinted at the reason. The switch to a more specialized 300 series alloy is imminent. This should improve performance under cryogenic temperatures and thus make the tank section reliable enough for higher pressure and the 20 km flight later this year. Meanwhile at the construction site, SpaceX showed their special approach to the Starship prototype stage once again. Serial number 4 was already undergoing tests at the launch site and serial number 5, the next candidate in the evolutionary process, was already taking shape in the high bay. That's right, SpaceX right now has two test candidates at the same time. Here you can see one of Boca Chica Gal's wonderful clips where you can see the Boca Chica crew flip the common bulkhead section. Show your love for her in the comments, her dedication is absolutely awesome. It's still missing the integrated header tank and the downcomer is not attached either, but that will change rather soon. In the high bay itself, we also already have the middle section of the oxygen tank, waiting to have the common dome segments stacked on top. And it wouldn't be SpaceX if these were the only pieces already finished. We also already have the top bulkhead section almost finished and waiting to be stacked on top of the finished common dome segment, which would already finish large portions of the tank section. And Starship Serial Number 5 will have some huge steps forward compared to its ancestor, a fairing section. The last time we saw this was in September of last year. SpaceX has stacked a nose cone onto Starship Serial Number 5. And it's a much better looking nose cone too compared to Mark 1 where we last saw something similar. Also interesting to notice that this is not the nose cone that has been sitting in front of the high bay for a while now. SpaceX chose to put a third nose cone on top of Serial Number 5. Maybe because this one is specially made for use without fins. Musk has already said that it's unlikely that we'll see fins on serial number 5, but that's planned for serial number 6. And if SpaceX does not slow down with their progress, serial number 6 will begin construction this week or the week after. If this pace continues, we'll see incredible amounts of activity this year and by the end of 2020 there's a good chance that we'll have a fairly developed and mostly functional Starship. We also already have the bottom bulkhead, including the thrust puck for serial number 5 in the final steps of assembly. This bulkhead will be integrated into the new thrust section. If SpaceX does this stack like they did serial number 4, the thrust section will come last, with the rest of the tank section being stacked on top of it. After that, the fairing section would only need two more rings to be finished off and ready for stacking on top of Starship serial number 5's tank section. Musk's also dampened hopes for a good belly flop maneuver on the first try. 
He said that chances will be high that the first starship to try it will have a rather sudden stop at the end. The evil side of me is already looking forward to it. Now let's take a look at the current road closures to see what we can expect for the coming week. Have a look at this. I'd call this a full calendar. Starship Serial number 4 and 5 will have quite the appointment list in the coming days. We have a primary test date on April 29th with backup dates today, April 26th, April 30th and May 1st. And we have a fresh NOTAM short for notices to airmen and women. These notices are to alert any pilots planning to fly through the area of irregularities not visible on the standard ICAO airspace maps. So no fly zones for example for Starship launches. And we do have such a restricted airspace for Boca Chica from April 30th to May 2nd. That's Thursday to Saturday. We also got another really good glimpse of one of the Raptors in Boca Chica. This is one of the engines that will propel the first starship into the Boca Chica sky. And in my opinion it looks really good. Last but not least let's have a look at our 3D starship progress animation provided by our new team member Nick Henning. This is where we take a look at the progress of the latest prototype to get a sense of what's already done and what still needs work. So this progress update is already for serial number 5. New with serial number 5 we have a fairing section which is already pretty far along. We also already have the top dome segment for the oxygen tank which goes here. We have the common dome segment separating methane and oxygen tanks as seen on the episode which goes here. We have a four ring segment for the oxygen tank which goes here. And we've also already seen the bottom bulkhead including the thrust puck which will later be integrated into the new thrust section and it will go here. This leaves Starship serial number 5 with a total of 7 ring segments missing. The engine section and the engine skirt and 2 more rings on the fairing section. Progress in Boca Chica is getting faster and faster every week where it's hard to believe that it could even go faster than it already was. It's stunning to see the progress in Boca Chica. One week of progress and I have to pick the topics I talk about. Since I had to compensate for the missing Thursday update because a certain Peter Beck did an interview with me, today's update just got a little bit longer than usual. With SpaceX's progress going faster and faster though there's a rather good chance that this will be the norm for the foreseeable future. So this wraps up today's episode of What About It. When will that first test flight be and is there a chance that SpaceX will speed up the progress even further? As always, tell me in the comments. And here we are again at the Patreon and YouTube member shoutout. This is where I thank those who go above and beyond to support the team behind the show. These people enable us to improve on a constant basis, to research that little bit further and to spend some extra money on equipment. Without these people what about it would not be possible in its current form so show your love for them in the comments and maybe even consider becoming one yourself. And as on every single episode since I started this channel there are new members on the team. In fact so many I just can't believe it. Everyone please give a warm welcome to Ed Holder, Sean West, Bruce Bird, Men in the Making, John Brady, Mo Halfmeyer, David Filmer, Michael Frigo, Daniel Douglas, Rocky Stones, Geordie Fitzgerald, Peter McDonald, Dan Iram, Mark Metzler, Cliff, Cliff Crowell, Chris DJ Depper, Dan Brown, Mark Ryman, Jim Streeter, Lawrence Hales and so many others. You rock! Also for the first time in the history of the channel I want to give a separate shout out to the team behind the show. These people are incredible and I have neglected it for far too long. Sorry guys, here's to you. Stinger NSW, Warhog, Will QF, Another Space Nut, Cyrus, Nick Henning, Pete MC, Tash Animation, Mooney Sky, Jettison Guy, Taxer, Pokemon Schnitzel, Casper Stanley, and last but not least, my wonderful wife, Split Second Mom. You've helped to make all this. Be proud. Thank you for watching this episode of What About It and now would be the appropriate time to hit the like button, subscribe and don't forget to hit the bell button to actually receive a notification when I do my uploads. It's a version of support that doesn't cost a penny and it does help me to produce more and better content. And if you do want to spend your money consider becoming a patron and get insights into the production of What About It and chat with me on the discord. Or you could buy yourself a new shirt on our merchandise store and look like me. There are plenty original designs available in good quality for a low price made by a space nerd for other space nerds. 
It all helps me to give you the latest and greatest about space and science. I hope to see you on the next episode. Until then, have a great time. Is the cat right down there? Yeah, it's always good to have a cat while recording. Not isolation, it's insulation. It's not social isolation. There's our impref... Imprefif... Imprefif? At the fuel farm. And a motorcycle. Love it! And I'm so happy. 